pretty soon these saplings should start sprouting for the spring. And I'm debating whether or not I should cull them or if I should move them. I've been slowly burning down that wood for my wood stove in my workshop. So that's working out rather well to have a nice pile of wood. I hope that some of the logs in the bottom have rotten enough to where I can actually use them for mulch. And if not, there's a nice bed of ash. I think since these trees are doing so well, and these are not, I'm going to abandon these ones and mow over them. Although I'll most likely save the um, black walnut, the three or four black walnuts that, are, that have survived. These are the what those ones that these are uh, the stolens that I transplanted last year. And you see, still seem alive. And then is it that one? Yes, this one. Oh, we already have a. No, it's an old leaf. Forgive me. This is the lone one of that tree that we have. I believe I've over-invested in maples. All right, not over-invested. I've just let maples grow, and because there's a maple tree right there, most of my trees are maples. I've done my best to preserve black walnut trees from that one, so we have like six or so from that. But I would like to have some oak trees. We don't have power lines on the side of the road, so we can have big trees up there. I found myself what I believe are some red oak acorns. Some of them are already growing. I'm seeing what items I have on hand and I think I'm, pla I'm hatching a bit of a plan. I have these little pieces of plexiglass, which I can fill this up with dirt and use those as little dividers just to keep the roots from intertangling too much for now. And um, it's a little bit tall, but I could put a few bricks in the bottom to to help make it so we don't need as much dirt. So, uh, let's try some leaves, because why not? And then I'll take all this wet sawdust. I bet that could be good somehow. The soil in this part of the yard is rather good. So I'll take some and that maple will go. And then we can get a hefty helping of ash. go down pretty quick. Yeah, so I could take these and divide this like so. Eh, it's kind of hard to do that. more experimental, of course. I don't actually know if that would really accomplish much, but I hope it would.
maybe this would help um, keep it from evaporating too much. I don't know. Now as for these other five, which are not sprouting of their own accord. I'm going to take this inside because it's still a bit a bit freezing at night and it doesn't need light until it actually starts sprouting and I've decided I'm going to call this collection of first acorns that I'm planting the first brood so that if there's seven of them that survive I'm going to call them Asdaya, Bahamut, Hreisfelger, Nidhogg, Ratatoskar, Tiamat, and uh, uh, Vertra and so because I have to have a little bit of nerdiness in here and I've already named another plant. My first plant I've really had this year is named Bertold, Bertold the Onion. When I got this, it was a little onion at, uh, we found him underneath the bridge, me and my father did, and I took him, I put him in my pocket and grew him and now he's all big and tall, but my cat has been eating him and he deserves to be outside. So I think Bertold shall be planted by the house so he does not get mowed. And it looks like he's actually taller than his other oniony companions. Wow. Look at the root system Bertold's developed. He had nothing like that before. And this is some of that soil that I used on the, the acorns, so I believe it's good soil. And he is a little bit taller than all the rest. So planting them a bit early did a good job. I also like to think that soil is just really good. So hopefully with a little bit of ash, it'll be even better for those acorns, the first brood. Oh, you know what? I guess the big oak tree that I got them from, that would have to be Midgard Sormer if it's the first brood. It's been two months and I've had a horrible realization. Bear told was a garlic, not an onion. Now I feel terrible. But I have a new pet. I call it my mossling. When I was collecting bottles in the forest, I found this one bottle that had like a little moss city inside of it. And when I was going to clean it out, I, I decided I'll just add a little bit more water, seal it up, and see how long it'll live. And it's been living for a month and a half in that bottle. Perfectly fine. I figured there's no sense in disturbing it while it's ha happily living and growing inside of there. It has a little bit of dirt in there, so that helps. But let's go check out the acorns to see if they've grown in the past two months. They haven't. So first of all, we have this, which none of them have grown. There's some odd plant here, which I'm not sure about. We'll let that grow and see what that turns into. It's probably something else. The trees though are looking great. Really great. I did minimize the tree garden because you don't need too many trees. So now we're just working with this small little patch which makes it easier to manage. I think I'm going to cut these ones. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of those. Whenever you see trees with three leaves, it just makes me think of poison ivy. And then this one, which is from that whitish one, it's a bit slower, but it's starting to come. You know what? That little thing over there might be one of those. We'll have to see. That'll be coming up pretty soon. I might have to slowly split these away, but that might be more of a next year thing. These ones are getting pretty tall. See, that's a, a different option. Uh, there's, there's, there's different options here. Either A, I could move them, or I could weed them out. I'm thinking I might plant a few back there, because I've been mowing the forest a bit, a bit again, and it needs some trees. 
all the trees back there are dying. I think they have too much similarity in DNA and they're being attacked by diseases. Now I have this inside and unfortunately I don't notice any acorns growing up. And I've been watering it very frequently. So let's see if we can if we can find out what happened to those acorns I put in there. I think my mixture of whatever I put in here probably wasn't a very good idea. Oh! Oh my god! Huh. There is one! Oh there's oh my god! I I'm fucking blind. There's two of them there. Oh, well. Okay. I can't believe it. I didn't notice it until now. That must have been a very recent thing. And plus, I had this indoors where it was dark, so maybe that plays a part. But yeah, I have. Oh! One, two. Three, four, five. That one's dead. It tried growing. Six. Uh, oh, it's just it's a nail. Six. Oh my God, that actually worked. Well, I can't believe it. That actually worked. I'm going to get my own oak trees from the first rood. Midgard Sormer and Rudolfnir and all of them. Oh, wait, Midgard Sormer is a big tree. Never mind, ignore me, ignore me. You know what? I had this in a somewhat dark area. Maybe that one died because it just didn't get enough light. So now that it's outside, because this is the first time I took it outside, we should put it into the greenhouse and hopefully that will be good for it. Normally I'd just feed these on uh, my leftover water whenever I'd go get some more water from the kitchen. So these ones have taken quite a bit of abuse. That's pretty nice. I can't believe I didn't notice that, but this seems like it's a very recent, recent change. Because yeah, that's it's a splitting acorn there. And it's like coming out. Oh, I know this part. It's, it's kind of twisting, like one part's going down to grow into as a root and one part's going up because I plant them kind of upright. That makes sense. So maybe they, it took a little longer for them to grow because you know, they should have been sideways because part of that piece coming out has to go down to grow a root. So maybe it grows a root first. If these uh, get up to about that tall, then I'll see about splitting them out because I don't want them to grow too much into each other. And here I thought I... Here I thought I killed them. I mean, like, because I started, I started, after I started doing that, I started looking up like uh, soil acidity or whatever, and it was like, oh no, ash will kill your trees or whatever. But I mean, six is fine with me. Six oak trees is pretty good. If I get some more land, I might see about growing some cottonwoods because those grow quite quickly, and they'd be great for making stuff out of like mallets. Now, if I understand correctly, seedlings like this are have, have evolved to spend their early days or weeks or months under thick grass. And so they're not designed to handle direct sunlight too much and they can actually kind of burn from too much sunlight. So I think putting them in my old tarp shed should be perfect. Although I'll let them get a little bit of direct sunlight for today because, you know, they haven't had sunlight ever in their lives. Yeah, well, except for lighting. I did have a light on them but it was just a very indirect light, so this is the first real sunlight they've ever had, so they should have maybe a few hours of it, maybe. All right, so now let's get back to my, what I was going to show you in the forest of where I can plant some maples. So about here, there's a lot of junk. Well, actually literal junk, but also weeds and bushes that are growing up too high. And I've been slowly mowing this Back in 2014, some of my longtime viewers might recognize that I mowed this originally a long time ago and grass just exploded out into here. 
and this grass it's been slowly losing to all the weeds so like this simulated natural disaster is what grass thrives in and so hopefully the grass will come back and continue to expand its territory as I mow but a lot of these trees like some of these are bushes now that's a little weird isn't it because I, I tied that ethernet cable on there in 2013 because this was too low and I have tried to cut that down but things like that like this bush I think it would be nicer to have trees and a lot of these trees those ones with oh I think that's poison uh, oak there or poison sumac well I don't know but I don't like the look of it I'll have to cut that vine. I cut a really big poison ivy vine that was on there this winter and so hopefully that'll help stop getting poison ivy in the area. So I still managed to get a little poison ivy on my wrist a bit ago but it's not too bad. It went away pretty quickly. So my exposure has been fairly small. But yeah I'm going to start going through here and mowing back to there. A lot of these trees, I mean if there's any trees here, I mean definitely keep those but I just think that I'm just not a fan of these ones which they always seem so sickly like they're all dying and the tops of the trees are dead that one's dead I think there's some disease that's just going through all and ravaging all of these so I just don't think it's a very wise idea to have too many of those like that one yeah so I, I'm, the maples don't seem to have any issues the black walnut it does seem to have some issues, although there could have just been a storm that that made it crack. But for a while there, it seemed like a lot of the branches were, were dropping off. It was fighting some sickness. Oh, and you might also notice I've burned most of the wood that was here in the wood pile. And a lot of this trash is underneath it. I'll slowly put in the trash can because it's just like burnt plastic or whatever. Now, unfortunately... Oh yeah, see that it's just, I just don't like the look of those trees. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill those. And... Oh. Somebody mowed over my other one, but... The black walnut that I transplanted. Well, I hope they don't mow too much, because... Yeah. Oh well. And this one, I think it's dead. I tried transplanting it, but oh well, yeah, that's totally dead. Totally dead. So we'll move, uh, well, we might move one of the oaks here. That'd be nice. Now some of the black walnut stolens have survived. They had to survive a lawnmower, but they are surviving. The black walnuts are definitely a hardy species. But yeah, these black walnuts are doing a very good job of staying alive, but they do have a very large root system to keep them alive, so that's good. Because they are stolons after all. I'm very excited about these ones, the tall ones in the middle. Now this tree, which has just grown up for the past several years, has just exploded. It's one of those ones that I don't really like. I'm not quite sure what type they are, but I, it, it's hard to keep them differentiated from poison ivy. But it's grown up quite tall. So that's definitely worth keeping. 
I had a real bad problem with poison ivy in this bush a few years back, around 2016 or so. There was a great big poison ivy vine that was growing up in it with a big root system. It took a year and a half to kill. There's the remnants of the vine. Going all the way down. There was um, one of the roots to the vine that was poking up uh, for a while, but that's gone too. But it's difficult to differentiate those leaves from the poison ivy sometimes, whereas these are easy to differentiate. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm happy with how the trees are doing. I can't believe I have six oak trees going. Maybe some more if some more decide to pop out. But I might start a lichen farm pretty soon. I have a small one up on my shed, but I might try to make a sealed one to see how, how it does and how quickly it can eat through rock because I'm interested in for like terraforming applications and such. So I might do a video about that sometime, but that wouldn't be a tree series because it's not a tree, it's a lichen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya. Lovely trees.